Um, the one on the left is A is less than seven. Okay, I agree. And then I think the one on the right is A is less than or equal to one. Okay, um, I think the one on the right's got to go the other direction, just looking at it. Um, did you, what did you do first? Did you move the nine? Did you move this minus 16, the minus A? What did you do to start this? Um, I subtracted the nine from the right and moved it to the left. And then I subtract, okay. right? So, so that would, it. yeah, that, that would, that would, it'll just do it once. That will get rid of the nine. Okay. So it's wait. And then and it, it's, it can still be solved, but it's just it's just. Um, it's uh, I don't want to say it. It's like you have more stuff to do. You have to move the eight, either move the eight a or move the sixteen a. Both are are correct. Which which way do you want to go? Do you want us to add sixteen A or add eight A? Doesn't um, probably add eight. Okay, so add eight A, add eight A, minus eight A less than or equal to zero. Still got to solve for A, so we're going to divide both sides by minus eight, and that makes A greater than or equal to zero. Okay. And I'm going to add in just this little wrinkle here to this problem, which is if, and actually hang on a second here. Huh. So because it's or, I didn't expect that. I don't know why I didn't see this. Um, oh, I know why. <laughs> I didn't mean to cross that out. I guess it is part of the problem. Oops. Okay, that's okay. Um, so here, here is the uh, solution here. It's a greater than or equal to zero. There's zero, so everything to the right. And then A less than seven, so everything to the left. How would you write the solution in interval notation? Do you remember that from the previous course? Uh, interval notation. It sounds very familiar. Um, Yes, yeah, so we're going to add in some places here. Minus infinity to positive infinity. And interval okay. notation means to go from left to right, minus infinity to positive infinity, and so on. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's transition to a new topic here. I was able to find some other materials that I think would be good. You almost always get a distance formula problem. Mm -hmm. But this time you get it with a calculator. But you have to use their calculator, which we don't have, but you can use the distance formula to, uh, with your own calculator. But they'll give you a couple of points. They'll say um, minus 3, comma, 5, comma, 4, comma, 13, for example. Let me just make sure that doesn't work out. Does not. And, and it'll say something like round to the nearest, the nearest tenth. Okay, so all that will be encoded in the problem that you would look at. So first of all, do you remember the distance formula? Um, I do not. You do not. Yeah. And so if you don't have it, right, you can't do the problem at all, but I will I will supply it because. We want to practice this here correctly. Um, y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared. So this is x1, this is y1, x2, and y2. Okay. All right. So um, again, they're only grading, they're only grading correct answers. So really take enough time to do it maybe once, maybe twice you know, confirm that it's actually the same answer each time. Okay. The two decimal places.
Um, D equals 15. Uh, to two to the nearest uh, tenth. So, so one decimal place or two decimal places. It's not a it's not a nice number. It's a. Oh, OK. Um, the nearest tenth. Is it 10.6? Is 10.6, very good. Okay, uh, let's do another one. No, let's call it... Um, just do another distance formula. Let me grab it here. See if you need it for another one here. Make this one a little bit harder. Um, let's say it's between the points um, minus four sevenths, comma six, and three sevenths, comma sixteen. Let's go to the nearest hundredth this time. Okay. Two decimal places. Um, 10.04. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now I think we should transition uh, to some exponent things. We kind of were doing this earlier, but I forgot that they ask you uh, some exponent type questions. I found another resource that I think is pretty, pretty useful here. So um, they'll give you a problem like, uh, this, it'll say to simplify, and it'll say something like um, 100 u to the 8th v to the 15th over 26 u to the 12th v to the 19th. Okay. Okay. And really, really, it's three problems in one. It's really, your focus should be on, okay, I've got to reduce this fraction, reduce this exponent, and then reduce this last one here. Okay. All right. And I think you know enough to do all the pieces of it. It's just not, you know, can you do it all together? I'm not sure. But what do you what do you remember about the middle one? We'll get, the number's not too bad. What do you remember about exponents here? Same base, but dividing. Do you remember what to do with the exponents? Um, I don't. So you subtract. So, and it's it's going to be u to the eighth minus twelve, u to the minus four. Okay, so it, this this becomes the middle one becomes u to the minus four on the top. Nothing on the bottom for the moment. So whenever you subtract exponents, it goes back to the top. How about 
How about 15 and 19? Um, what does that become? Is it V to the negative four? Yes. Okay. Now, how about this 100 over 100 over 26? How might you reduce that? Like, can you think of a number that goes into both? Is it, uh, is it two? Yes, two goes into both. So is it 50 over 13? Yes. So now this is this is correct, but this is not how it'll it'll want it. It'll say it'll say no negative exponents. Okay, and that means remembering yet another um, another property here. Okay, so the the property is, is is if you have if you have a negative exponent, it becomes a positive exponent on the bottom. So this this u to the fourth becomes one u to the minus fourth becomes one over u to the fourth. This v to the minus fourth becomes one over v to the fourth. Fifty over thirteen, like that. Okay. And then from here, you would you would combine the tops to be fifty. Thirteen u to the fourth v to the fourth. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? Uh, no. So just you know, just to kind of recap, we we have to apply some exponent rules, deal with negative exponents, and uh, manipulate this thing if we need to. Okay, so let's look at another one here. Let's look at something like this: uh, fourteen x to the seventh y to the ninth over six x to the eighth y to the sixth. All right, so we'll do this. We'll work this example out together. Again, you're kind of looking at it in, in three pieces here. All right, so let's look at the numbers first. What does 14 over 6 reduce to? What's what's a number that goes into both 14 and 6? Uh, two. Two. So 7 and 3. What happens when you... Do the exponents here when you when you divide? What happens to these two exponents, the seven and the eight? Um, do you subtract them? Yes. Okay, and the result always goes in the numerator, so it'd be x to the minus one. What does the last one become? And then y is nine minus six, which is three. So y cubed. But you can't leave any negative exponents. How would you change this middle one? Um, you would put one over x. So you would put the x in the denominator. Yes. Like that. Okay. So I'm going to give you one uh, that they have it's a little different, but we got to kind of go to the, you know, the real ones um, next. But it's essentially the same approach. You break it up into three separate problems and uh, work it out. Um, so can you give this a try, please?
any questions for me on what's here in front of you? Um, is the answer v to the fourth over negative two? Well, well, five to the six minus eight is negative two. That goes in the numerator. What happens from here? How do we how do we kind of a, a, adapt um, to this? How do we, how did we change the negative exponents? Um, you put them in the denominator. Yes, so it'd be it'd be five squared in the bottom. Okay. And what does uh? So it'd be v to the fourth over 25. Okay. All right. Now, you know, you know, full disclosure, that's probably right on the cusp of being a, a problem you might see, but it, it's, it could be considered a not, not difficult enough. You know, it really depends on uh, what they throw at you. So a few more rules to remember. Let's say it's something like this, 3x to the minus 4 v to the eighth over z to the minus two, all to the power of three. Okay, so this power of three applies to every single exponent. And there's one that's not written, the three really is to the power of one. So you have to multiply every single exponent by three. So it's three to the power of three, x to the power of minus 12, v to the 24th, and z to the minus six. Is that, is that something that you think you can remember? I mean, it's just distributing to each of them. Okay. All right. now. It, you look to see if anything is the same, like there's an X, there's a V, there's a Z, there's no similar letters. Would you agree? There's nothing to cancel. Yeah. But maybe, maybe you can still manipulate this, right? Like the negative exponents flip positions, right? So this X to the minus 12, it's going to go to the bottom. The Z to the minus six is going to go to the top. Three to the power of three. I have to simplify that. Twenty-seven. Yeah, twenty-seven. What what else goes on the top? Um, is it still the same like x to the negative twelve v to the twenty-fourth? Well, we really really could switch positions. I mean, you can't leave a negative exponents. Oh, so does that goes to the bottom? Yes. Okay. So give me the, the final answer here whenever you got it. Does the Z to the negative six, does that stay at the bottom? It has to flip positions. So let's let's go back and look. I mean, we're we're not doing anything new. We're just we're just maybe doing something that's that's different. Um let me take a look here. Maybe I never did I did not cover that. So yeah, um I guess that is a little bit new. The if if it's if it's a negative exponent on the bottom, it becomes positive x to the fourth on the top. Okay. So if if it's negative, just think of it as as switch switching positions. Okay, so is it 27, um, 27 V to the 24th, Z to the 6th over X to the 12th? Okay, 
Uh, let's do another one here. Let's go five X to the minus three y to the minus two over w to the minus five, all squared. Is it five W to the 10th over X to the sixth, Y to the fourth? Everything is correct except the five. The five has an exponent. What is the exponent? Oh, is it five squared? Yes, yes. So everything else you said is correct. 25 w to the 10th, x to the 6th, y to the 4th, that is all good. OK, so let's look at kind of a compound problem. Um, so let's look at something like this, like 2x squared, y to the minus 3 to the power of 3 power, all divided by 8x to the 9th, y to the minus six, okay? And these are the complexity you would expect on, on, a, on a placement test. Okay. So the, the start is to, is to deal with the, the numerator, okay? It's to apply that exponent to everything in the numerator. So is the numerator um, 2x to the sixth, y to the negative ninth? Okay, but in the last problem, same same idea. What happens to the number? It still has an exponent. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, yes, yes. 2 to the third? Yes, which is 2 times 2 times 2. So 8x to the sixth, y to the negative ninth. Yes, and then... On the bottom here, you can apply the, the rules like we've been talking about, where you subtract the exponents and uh, rewrite as, as needed. So why don't you take the problem from here? Is it one over eight? Wait. Um, there is a one in the numerator. That's that is true.
I think it's one over ax cubed and then y cubed. All right, so this part is correct. The eights cancel. Okay. They just divide out. All right, let's try one more before we maybe switch to another topic here. Um, we can always do more of these. They're just, they get really tough. Let's go, um, let's go uh, 15 X to the, I need to switch letters. I'm, I get too caught up in using the same letters. A to the 10th, B to the minus five over three, A to the minus four, B to the 10 squared. Let's maybe focus on the denominator first. Um, is the denominator 9a to the 16th and then b to the 20th? I uh, see so you're multiplying 2 times 10 is definitely 20, but 2 times minus 4 is minus oh, eight minus eight yes yes Is it 6a to the 18th over oh wait, b to the 15th? Okay, the, 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 every, the number is not correct, but everything the, the variables are like the exponent powers are perfect. Wait, I'm sorry. Minus 5 minus 25 is minus 25. So it ends up being a 25 there. I'm sorry. Okay. Didn't catch that. Minus 5 minus 20. But 15 over 9. You're trying to find a number that goes into both of them. I think you're you settled on maybe three going into both. Fifteen divided by three, and then nine divided by three, so five and and three. Okay. All right. Um, trying to think of what to go to next to not make it super crazy. Let's start talking about some domain and range um, problems here. So let me um, let me throw some problems at you here. Domain problems we'll look at next. So let's say I give you something like this: the square root of one plus two x, and this is the function. And I want the domain of this function. Okay, the domain the domain is is based on What's inside here? You have to set the inside part greater than or equal to zero. Okay. So can you solve that for 
for X for us, like we were doing earlier. Um, is it x is greater than or equal to zero? So to, we're solving for x. To do that, you have to undo the two things on the left here, right? You have to undo this one and then this two. Which do you undo first? Addition and subtraction or multiplication and division? Um, the multiplication. So order of operations, that would be true, right? When, you, when you're simplifying, you that way. But when you're solving, you have to go back the other. Okay. So this, you'll undo the, the plus one first, two X greater than or equal to negative one. And then from here, you divide by two, everything by two. So X is greater than or equal to negative one half. Oh, okay. Let's, let's try another one. Let's say f of x equals a square root of 3x minus 4. Could you do the same thing? And, and just to be clear, that is the domain. The domain is, is that right there. Okay. So, can you, so do the same thing for this one. Set it greater than or equal to 0 and solve for x. Um, X is greater than or equal to four thirds. Very good. Okay. Now let's go to a number line with that. Here's four thirds. Is it an open or a closed dot? Um, a closed dot. And are you shading to the right or to the to the to the left? You're going to the right. Okay. And they, you, you won't see this for but it, but it is infinity out there. It's good to write it in interval notation now. This would be bracket four thirds, comma infinity, with a parenthesis. Okay. Okay. So you may be expected to write it in interval notation. For the previous one, x greater than or equal to minus one half. It's kind of the same thing here. Here's minus one half. Everything to the right. That's infinity. So it's bracket minus one half, comma infinity with a parenthesis. If you go to the other direction, it's it's minus infinity, minus infinity here. So the, the, the standard question you'll see will typically be going the other direction. And that's what we're gonna see here in this, in this practice problem. So I'd like you to try this um, same setup as before. You set the part under the root greater than or equal to zero. Um, X is less than or equal to four fifths. And then can you give me what this would be in interval notation? In interval notation, that would be, um, is it four fifths comma negative infinity? 
So it, it always goes from left to right. So notice that when I made the number line here, it was the leftmost value, then the rightmost value. You, oh. You've given me the right things, but you, but it's not in the right order, and it has to be with certain certain uh, yeah, symbols. We'll say your parentheses or brackets. Um, kind of kind of as uh, as as review here, it's like parentheses, parentheses go with this, and this and this bracket, bracket filled in, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Infinities always go with parentheses. So in your problem, you said four fifths. You're shading left. So give me give me the interval notation here, please. Is it two parentheses or just one? Because you're you're starting over here on the left at minus infinity, moving to the right, stopping. So it's it's minus infinity, comma four fifths. What goes with the infinity? What goes with the four fifths? Um, is it parenthesis bracket? Yes. Yes. Good. Good. Okay. Now we're now we're moving into some problems where you're going to have a little bit more complicated domain. But let's just look at a number line first. Let's say it goes, and I'll put a open circle here at minus three, and a filled in circle here at one, and that's minus infinity, and that's positive infinity. It's all of that, and then all of this to the right. So in interval notation, you start with minus infinity and three. Infinities always get parentheses, always. Minus three, sorry. Because it's not filled in here, it's a parenthesis. The other one is one to infinity. Parenthesis always goes with infinity. Bracket though with the one, and then in this, in the Alex, you'll see that you have to use this union operator. It'll it'll be very easy. You'll just you'll just click on the button. It'll say it'll see a U, and it'll it'll just click on it. But you have to know you have to know that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I've seen that before. Okay. okay. But you might see something even more sophisticated. Okay. And and we'll talk about that. So let me let me put something. I'll say it's a minus six, minus three, minus two. And it might be something like this. Uh, let's go open circle, close circle, open circle. Okay, so could you tell me the domain here or what's what's filled in? The domain. Um... I'm so I'm still a little confused. Well, let's go back and look at the previous problem. Why did we choose these these symbols and these numbers based on what's like like what's what's the mapping? Um, because it's less than it's shaded. Right? Like the shaded parts map to the numbers and the infinity. Same with over here, right? The one to infinity, and then you have to decide whether it's a bracket or parentheses. So you're you're looking at the shaded part for that. Okay. So what so what's shaded here between what two values? Negative six and negative three. Good. Yes. Now you have to decide on the left. Is it a is it a bracket or a parenthesis? Um, a parenthesis. Yes. And on the right? A parenthesis. 
but it's but it's a dot it's a filled in dot so that changes oh, it oh, oh bracket bracket yeah union and then what goes in between here or i'm sorry what goes next now you've got a negative two and infinity those um, come down but what goes left and right of them it's negative or for the negative two it's the parenthesis and yes. then is it still parenthesis for the infinity it's always parenthesis for infinity okay always 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 all right um let's try one more here let's go uh negative four negative two and let's go that way and then that way can you tell me what the what the what to write here for interval notation um it's negative infinity to negative four and it's two parentheses around it okay for sure with the minus infinity but this one's a filled in bubble oh, oh, oh a bracket bracket union yeah. union negative two to positive infinity which is they're, and they're both parentheses this time because uh, not filled in and then all the way to the right there yeah all right well we're going to go ahead and stop right here um definitely 